Hi, this is Mark Weitzman, and uh, welcome back to the last of our special relativity exercises on the, from the Feynman Lectures on Physics. In this problem 1314, we're going to talk about a decay of a pi zero meson. Now, a pi zero meson, neutral pi zero meson, decays into two photons, usually takes about 10 to the minus 16 seconds. This is a purely electromagnetic decay. A uh, strong interaction decay would take about 10 to the minus 23 seconds, and a weak interaction decay would be about 10 to the minus 8 seconds. So we have the, in the lab frame, we have a pi zero meson moving at velocity v. It's going to decay into two photons, one of which is going to go off at angle theta from the incident direction, which we'll call the x direction. The other one will go off at an angle theta 2 in the x direction. The problem wants you to calculate the energy as a function of the angle. Now, to analyze this, we'll look in the center of mass frame. The center of mass frame is moving this way at velocity v. This puts the neutral pi meson at rest. So here we are before the decay. After the decay, we have to have energy and momentum conserved. So we'll have one photon going off in, at an angle theta prime and the other one going off exactly opposite to it. This conserve, puts the total momentum at zero, which corresponds to the momentum at zero before the decay. And each one will have an energy which is equal to half the energy beforehand. Remember, the energy beforehand is just the mass, the rest mass of the pion. So this will have half the rest mass of the pion, and this will have half the rest mass of the pion. Now, to do the calculation, we're going to make use of a Lorentz transformation. And here we make use of the standard fact that the E and P are a four vector. Just corresponds to the same thing like T and X are a four vector. So the transformation for a four vector would be the energy in the lab frame is equal to gamma times the um, standard Lorentz transformations, the energy in the moving frame plus V times the momentum in the moving frame. And the momentum, the X component at least, would be equal to gamma times px prime plus v e prime. So these are our two equations that we're going to use. Some of you, the plus signs are because we're going from the prime frame, the moving frame, to the rest frame, the lab frame. Now, let's set up our equations using these transformations. So the energy of the gamma, the photon, is equal to gamma times the energy in the moving frame, the center of, I call it the center of mass frame. It is, of course, the uh, center of momentum frame or the zero momentum frame. So here we're going to have m, the rest mass of the pi zero over two plus v times the momentum. cosine of theta prime. So we get this because because we're dealing with photons the absolute value of the momentum is equal to the energy because we have a zero rest mass. So the value of the momentum is the same as the energy and we have to take the projection to get the x component cosine theta prime. So this is just equal to m pi 0 over 2 times gamma times 1 plus v cosine theta prime. Now our next equation, the px equation, this is equal to gamma times m pi 0 over 2 cosine theta prime. Again, that's the same factor over here for the momentum in the 
lab in the center of momentum frame plus V times M pi zero over two, the energy in that frame. And just factoring out the uh, mass over here, it's M pi zero over two, gamma cosine theta prime plus V. And we'll need one more equation to solve this easily. And in the lab frame, the relationship between the angles theta is simply that the, the gamma x component is equal to the energy times cosine theta. So in the lab frame, our photon is going like this. And we just take the projection to get the momentum frame. Again, using the fact that energy and momentum, the magnitudes are the same for a photon. So substituting in this equation, substituting these two equations, we're going to get m pi 0 over 2 gamma cosine theta prime plus v equals m pi 0 over 2 gamma 1 plus v cosine theta prime times cosine theta. Let me just make clear I didn't write it down, but gamma is our standard boost factor for transformations in special relativity. And of course, we're working with c equal 1 as in our, all, our, all our videos for special relativity. So from this equation, it's just a matter of um, simple algebra to solve for cosine theta prime. And you know, just here's cosine theta prime on this side and this side. So it, the end result is cosine theta prime is equal to V minus cosine theta divided by V cosine theta minus one. And if we substitute this result back in our formula here for the energy, we get our answer. The energy of the gamma is equal to, I'm not going to show all the algebra. I'll show some of it. Gamma V M pi zero over two, one plus V times V minus cosine theta divided by V cosine theta minus 1. And this can all be simplified using this to M pi 0 over 2 square root 1 minus V squared divided by 1 minus V cosine theta. That's our answer. We get the energy of the photon as a function of the angle theta. Now, the second part of the problem just asks for the maximum and minimum energy. And it's clear that if we want to maximize the energy, we want to make this denominator as small as possible, so make cosine theta as large as possible, so that corresponds to theta equals zero. E equal E max. And that is simply equal to the square root 1 plus v over 1 minus v m pi over 2. And similarly, the minimum, we make this as large as possible, so we make theta equal pi. E is equal to E minimum, which is equal to the square root. 1 minus v, 1 plus v, m pi over 2. And finally, if we were to add the maximum and the minimum and do the algebra, we would get a nice simple equation, e max, let me just box this, e max plus e min is equal to 
m pi over the square root 1 minus v squared. So this, this is nice. This is the total energy available in the lab frame. That's the energy of the neutral pion. And if one of the photons goes in the maximum direction this way, the other one is going in the minimum direction. So this is just conservation of energy. Okay, so um, that's the end of um, these exercises in the Feynman lectures for special relativity. There are some more. Um, there are some more exercises in Jackson's book on classical electrodynamics, graduate level textbook. He has a whole chapter and has a lot of kinematic problems and uh, on collisions. And I recommend you look at those. Finally, as usual, I can't be reached at. Uh, these addresses on uh, Piazza or at gmail.com. Thank you very much.